Sasha Bailey was so depressed at his lowest point that he considered ending his own life. However, he was persuaded by online chat groups that there was still hope. He could change into a woman. Sasha had an image of herself with long blonde hair and pneumatic curves, like a real-life Barbie. Had the 29-year-old son of celebrity photographer David Bailey and his fourth wife, model Catherine, lived his entire life under the impression that he was a prisoner of his own body. He is adamant that not. Instead, as the art curator went through a turbulent and challenging marriage and became so deeply unhappy that he was scarcely able to get out of bed, thoughts of becoming a woman started to arise. He claims, I was so unhappy with my life that transitioning was a way for me to kill myself without dying. I believe that if I could accomplish this one thing, everything would change and I would be able to reinvent myself as someone completely different. Sasha saw a private doctor, who confirmed that he was transgender and wrote a prescription for female hormones as a preliminary to gender affirmation surgery, because he was so certain that this was the appropriate course of action and wanted to expedite the process. But after 15 months, Sasha still appears before me as the charming young man he has always been, not as a woman. He has been saved from the verge of making a potentially disastrous decision that may have changed his life, thanks to the support of his family and the affection of his new partner, 32-year-old photographer Lucy Brown. It would be an understatement to say he is really appreciative. To be more precise, he is opening up about this very personal matter out of amazing relief intending to use his experience for what he thinks to be the greater good. Despite his easy-going demeanor and charming grin, you cannot help but notice his vulnerability. I think there's a big issue with gender dysphoria being overdiagnosed, Sasha states. I think there are a lot of people, like myself, who aren't genuinely trans. They're just really unhappy, and transitioning is a means of changing themselves into a new person which they hope would heal everything. Obviously, it is quite real for some people. The old issues and social pressures won't affect this new person. However, that is obviously untrue. Sasha is aware that he can become the target of trolls because of his audacious speech. However, nobody can dispute my lived experience, he asserts. I am just talking about what I know from the heart. Naturally, all of this seems like a far cry from a glamorous background. Sasha's father David, now 86, has a portfolio of remarkable fashion and celebrity portraiture, and among his ex-wives are the famous beauties Catherine Deneuve and Marie Helvin. Another well-known model is Sasha's mother Catherine, to whom David is still married today. Sasha, along with his elder siblings Fenton and Paloma, enjoyed a bohemian upbringing growing up in London and at the Devon Rural House Bailey. The family is tight. It was an amazing experience to grow up with my parents, they were both very inspiring individuals, he says, recalling a home frequented by celebrities. I recall that at one event, Ronnie would told me to tie people's shoelaces together. As a result, I pulled someone to the floor, and Manolo Blahnik kicked me, which was rightfully done, he grins. Sasha, who was dyslexic, attended a specialized private school in London until the age of 16. Having inherited his mother's brunette coloring and exquisite bone structure, he was signed by prestigious modeling agency Storm after a year. He had already moved in with an older girlfriend by that point. I wanted to go out there and do my own thing because I was going through a rebellious phase, he explains. Then, at the age of 19, he met attorney Mimi Nishikawa through a mutual friend after returning from six months of modeling in Japan. Even though she was 20 years his senior, they were immediately attracted to each other. We just bonded. She was so charming and magnetic, he adds. I believe we were somewhat alone ourselves, and we ultimately came across one another. It did raise a few eyebrows, but honestly that part of it was never an issue for me, and still isn't, he says in reference to the age difference. Regardless, the romance developed remarkably quickly. Despite the reservations of friends and family, the pair married at the Camden Registration Office in three months with only two witnesses, Sasha's best friend and Mimi's roommate. Many people told me it was a bad idea, but you have to have your blinkers on when you're in that kind of zone. He adds, 
I am aware that many were concerned, but my father simply laughed and told me to do as I pleased. What could he say, considering he got married at roughly the same age? At first, the marriage seemed content enough, and they made Whitechapel, East London, their home. But with time, it grew more and more poisonous. He claims, it got to the point where it was pretty terrible. She wasn't particularly kind to begin with, and there were a lot of other problems. He was growing more and more depressed and lonely, and he couldn't confide in friends and family. When you're in a scenario like this, he adds, you place yourself in a metaphorical cage because you start making up all these excuses for why you can't get out. You enslave yourself in a way. Sasha proposed that the pair go to Japan at the end of 2019 in order to start over. Even when they moved to the outskirts of Tokyo, their situation only got worse. Remarkably, he confesses that by September 2022, he was so miserable that he thought about ending his life. I left a message, he admits. It's still on my phone. At the last minute, he changed his mind. I just couldn't get out of bed for ages after that. He recalls. The idea of altering one's gender began to take shape at this moment. It's an idea that just grew and grew, he says, adding that he had been considering it beforehand. It turned into a means of becoming someone else instead of having to kill myself. A way out, if you will. This potential solution was supported in the online chat forum Sasha had been visiting, where people discussed how transforming one's gender could open doors to a new life. It's the best way to fix your issues since everything about you is said to come down to this one issue, and everything will be perfect if you can resolve this one issue, says Sasha. He felt free after deciding to transition at the end of September 2022. I felt fantastic when I came to terms with my transgender identity because I felt like I was making progress toward a real objective. I would get where I needed to be if I went along this route, taking the hormones and having the operation. This is really helpful when you're completely lost. Following his encounter with a psychiatrist at a private clinic in Japan, he spoke via an online translation forum with the psychiatrist. Sasha received a transsexual diagnosis. He states, It took 10 minutes. I was given a box of HRT, hormone replacement therapy, patches and sent on my way after he recommended that I see a surgeon. I never do things half-heartedly, and my goal was to go pretty aggressive with the surgery, he declares. He saw himself turning into a tall, beautiful blonde. The complete Barbie cliché, he describes it now, adding, there's an irony really, you can't follow stereotypes unless you identify as transgender. It is no little ironic that Sasha was unable to pursue this path further because his marriage suddenly came to an abrupt end. Just a few days after arriving at the clinic, Sasha left for London. He claims, I really thought that something terrible was going to happen if I didn't leave. I simply left there after that. The following morning, I simply took my go bag from a cupboard that Mimi was unaware of, headed straight to the airport, and paid for an airline ticket to London at the terminal. He ran away to live with his parents who he claims were unbelievably supportive when he told them about his aspirations to change gender. They were supportive to a fault. My sister was incredibly supportive, my brother was very supportive, and my mom was a little confused, he recalls. That's great on one level, but I think there's another problem. It seems like society is holding a gun to people's heads because the only option left is to be cancelled if they don't support it. There's no in-between. You're either for it or you're transphobic. In fact, Sasha's plans had to be shelled as he tried to acquire an appointment, nervous not to begin hormone therapy until he was certain he got a second month supply from the NHS. He smiles and says, I guess you could say that the NHS's slowness helped to save me. Sasha claims that after returning home and having some time to reflect, he realized that altering his outward identity would not ease the complicated emotions he was experiencing on the inside. A PTSD diagnosis has been made for him as a result of events that occurred during his marriage. He claims he came to two realizations. One, the thought of my saying, oh, 
I feel like a woman was ridiculous because there was no real way I could know what it feels like to be a woman because I'd never been one. And the second thing I realized was that my inside feelings were enough to influence how I felt on the outside. All I needed to do was accept it. It hasn't been simple at all. After experiencing what Sasha refers to as gender euphoria, a feeling that he had found a solution to his discontent, he was forced to confront reality. It stunned me that I had to confront my issues head on. He adds, We can assume that the procedure is still in progress. Sasha reports feeling much better but still a little bewildered. Any traumatic experience requires time to process. He explains, In addition, I have to face the reality that 10 years have passed. I lost my house, and we also lost the art company we founded together. However, his friends and family are allowing him some time to heal. At the moment, I live with my parents, and they've been really understanding, he states. So has his new partner Lucy, whom he says has offered him supportive, non-judgmental, and loving care. He says, Lucy has saved my life in a lot of ways. She is such a wonderful person. They will soon move into a new home, and he intends to organize another show of artwork. Above all, he is relieved that he refrained from taking those initial, seductive steps toward becoming a lady. I'm glad I didn't take the hormones because you run the risk of becoming infertile in a few months, and the idea that I wouldn't be able to have kids is heartbreaking, he adds. However, it also highlights the unsettling truth that we are forcing 15 and 16 year olds to decide whether or not they want to have children of their own, and that is wrong. He admits that his experience represented the extreme in a world where having money allows you to live the life of your dreams without too many uncomfortable concerns. However, he thinks that his story has a lot of relevance in the UK, where an increasing number of young people are receiving transgender diagnoses. He says, I wish everyone could just take a moment to breathe. I believe we will be surprised by how quickly we got away with all of this when we look back on this time. Rather than pushing patients toward medicine prematurely, we should give them the time and space to discuss and process their emotions. He also hopes that anyone who is struggling might find hope in his tale. He says, I still have some work to do. But despite all that's happened to me, I'm thrilled to be starting over. Dial 116-123 to reach out to the Samaritans for private support.